been a reoccurring uh, factor through the entire, uh, what are we in, 16 odd hours. Um, mm. you know, my take, uh, you, you know, you can add to this or rip it apart, but I mean, it, it's not the calories that govern whether we gain or lose weight if people are looking at it from that context. The caloric model is highly flawed. Um, yes. uh, it's a highly antiquated system. Uh, it doesn't account, in my opinion, for the effect of insulin, uh, the thermic effect of food, ketogenesis, metabolic rate, and the effect of lectins on insulin. Uh, it's not the calories. Energy needs to be accounted for. Uh, and I use the term energy over calories because calories are not uh, the best way uh, to, to, to quantify this. Uh, you know, I, I call it energy. Uh, I, I think you, you refer to it as heat, which is a fantastic term. Um, mm. uh, yeah, do you want to go into a little bit more detail in regards to that? I mean, cal the whole caloric model and anyone who yeah. uses, you know, mm. that sort of, um, that, that I can understand in regards to uh, referencing when we're speaking to people who don't understand being ketogenic or carnivore um, uh, and trying to explain how we can consume X amount of energy throughout the day. So I, I can consume uh, between five to six thousand calories on a, on a on a carnivore ketogenic lifestyle and and maintain weight on a high carb high lifestyle at two and a half thousand to two thousand seven hundred i will gain weight continuously uh week after week after week yet the caloric model if taken from calories is considerably higher when i'm on a ketogenic or carnivore lifestyle um so it clearly isn't the calories it's the source of that energy it's the source of the heat and and these are things that um uh, being ketogenic uh, you know, can't account for it. It's not the calories. Do you want to go into a little bit more detail? Yeah, look, my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm, not, I'm sure it's, I'm, I'm, I'm just wimbling, so I'm not sure it's a pleasure to go through this. I'm going to say it's a pleasure. Why not? Here we go. All right. Energy is another one of these constructs. It's another thing that cannot be directly measured it can't be held it can't be looked at it can't be contained per se actually the only way that we can gauge or put a metric on so-called energy at all is to observe the effects that so-called energy the construct energy has on physical matter stuff a system of particles okay some kind example the calorie is a measurement specifically and explicitly of heat energy you've probably all heard the um, colloquial version of the um, what's called the law of conservation of energy um, which was originally asserted, I guess, among others, by the mathematician Emily Nerther in the last century. And she mathematically established reason to assert that, in effect, energy cannot be created from nothing, neither can it be destroyed and made into nothing. It can only be changed from one form into another form. So the analogy, if you like, is currency. I cannot go into sainsbury's local tomorrow in the uk number one because i'm in new zealand and that would be <laughs> hard to get. But let's say i was in the uk i can't go into sainsbury's local tomorrow and put 10 new zealand dollars on the counter and buy roughly six pounds worth of goods using that new zealand legal tender it's money absolutely it's money in the same way that heat energy is one of the forms of energy but if the form of energy that you require is kinetic then another form of energy might not be any good to you in the same way that the, the shopkeeper in the local sainsbury's is not going to accept my ten dollars new zealand as being equivalent to six pounds sterling give or take whatever the exchange rate is today they, these are different currencies, but they are all currencies. So energy, one form to another. Heat, um, ionizing radiation, kinetic, potential, chemical, etc. All different forms of so-called energy, um, all with so-called equivalences. Meaning that if we measure one form of energy, then we know how much energy the system is using is balanced at 
whatever. But that is the worst kind of reductionism possible, really. Because, number one, the experimental work done to establish what the equivalence between a calorie and a kilojoule is, was dodgy at best. You need to look that thing up if you don't know how that was done, for example. Um, it involved a researcher hundreds of years ago dropping fixed weights from a fixed height into containers of water and measuring the change in the temperature of the water bath under the influence of having this weight smack into it. Hello. Hello. <laughs> anyway, that's that's for another day. Heat energy, what is it? What is a calorie? A calorie is measured as the effect of rapidly combusting instantaneously a food sample inside a closed bomb calorimeter and seeing how much a bath of water surrounding that closed thermodynamic system heats up under the influence of burning that substance of food, that sample, whatever it is. Huge electrical current put through this bit of cheese, for example. It goes woof, combusts, releases out heat, which then propagates out, hits the walls of the bomb calorimeter, warms those up. The walls of the bomb calorimeter then pass that heat onto the water bath surrounding it. Hey presto, change in temperature of the water around the bomb calorimeter. Fantastic. Okay. So this heat that propagates out, what form does that take? Well, it's photons. It's set wavelength. It's infrared photons. That's what heat is. And the only way you can pass heat from one body to another is by the exchange of photons between those bodies at various energy levels to change the energy status such that the total energy is shared evenly between two bodies in contact over a period of time. Entropy increases, basically. Disorder increases. Everything evens out in the universe. Fantastic. Okay, so... When we burn rapidly a food sample inside a bomb calorimeter, we release photons. Do you know what the rest mass of a photon is, Richard? I do not. Zero. Zero. Photons have no rest mass. They weigh nothing. They have no spatial extent. They do not literally exist. So, literally. Literally. <laughs> They have no literal existence. Oh, I'm going to be really, really, uh, I'm going to have to cut in here because we have to stop in about three minutes. Okay, so I get the last bit done quickly then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, sorry, mate, well, okay. I'm sorry. Because StreamYard um, can't do 24 hours in a row, so we have to right. go over to another studio. Okay, so the next, the next time we do this, we probably need to have guests on for longer than, you know. Anyway, that's for another day. Right, so photons weigh nothing. Nothing at all. That being said, the loss or gain of photons by a body, how does that affect your weight? Given that your weight is the mass exerted by you on a weighing scale under the influence of gravity because of the physical mass of the molecules in your body. So take any number you like at all, 70 kilos. Add any number of photons to that mass. <laughs> all of which weigh nothing, the change in your mass is nothing. Lose any amount of photons and your weight is similarly unchanged. The only way to change your weight is to expire carbon dioxide gas, which has a weight, a mass, or to produce water, which you then urinate out, sweat out, comes out near tears, your saliva and other insensible losses like vapor at the lungs. It's not calories in, calories out. It's mass in, mass out. Mass is the only acceptable terminology to use, the only acceptable model for body composition claims, not energy. Um, energy and mass have an equivalence, but it's one of those um, it's one of those exchange rate things on on different currencies. So that's the take home. That's the skinny. That's the quickly truncated, abbreviated version of the calories argument. Sorry. Calories don't weigh anything. They can't affect your weight. Only mass can. It's a mass in, mass out uh, 
um, exercise, that's an unassailable argument. 